this Rubo frame saw kit uh, requires the two main beams to be an inch and a quarter thick, and unfortunately I didn't have the material an inch and a quarter thick that I could use, so I decided to laminate together two pieces of three quarter inch thick material. Fairly straightforward process, gluing them up and uh, adhering them, but uh, I don't know, I kind of enjoy this, making thin boards thick again. You don't often hear about people growing wood. <laughs> but uh, clamping it up always reminds me that I need to make more clamps. You never have enough. So I might be doing that sometime here soon. While the glue dries, I decided to paint the hardware. This isn't a necessary step, but it is for me. <laughs> because everything in my shop has to be painted the same blue. Now you get to see the damage after uh, pulling everything off. And in this case, everything was a uh, really nice glue up. Very smooth joints. From this point on, I'm basically treating it as rough sawn lumber. Because uh, most of the dimensions need to be brought down. But the planing is uh, fairly quick. And I love when I get curls to pop out like that. It just makes my day happy. <laughs> That's why I do hand tool woodworking. Now these are an inch and a half thick, and I need to bring them down to an inch and a quarter thick. I do that with a four plane. It allows me to go across the grain and take off large chunks. It just took me uh, about four or five minutes of board to bring them down to the proper thickness. This frame saw kit has a pattern you can cut out for the main beams and I just glue it on and uh, use that to trace as I cut with the saw. This is a bow saw that I made recently and I really enjoy it. It is a, a fun replacement for a band saw. Uh, this particular cutout has a lot of curves and bends and it's very useful for that. Some of it I use the panel saw but uh, the bow saw is fun. Once it's all cut to the proper shape, then I can start using rasps and files to detail and finish it. On the other beam where my hands will be grabbing, I'm actually using another saw to trace out the grip. And I want it to be more of a, a saw grip as opposed to the uh, traditional Rubo ball handles. I use a panel saw to cut most of the waste out, and then I'll come back in with a bow saw and a chisel and clean it up with rasps. Poplar is actually really fun to work with. It is a pain to finish and smooth, but very nice for uh, chisels and uh, shaping. The handles make it uh, very, very easy to just take a, a saw, uh, excuse me, a chisel and quickly shape the handle down to approximate size that I can come through a little later with a rasp and uh, make it a little more specific. I chamfered all the edges on the far side of the saw and with the poplar it's really quick just to run down with a chisel to get the chamfer fairly close. It's a quarter inch in from either side. And then I'll clean it up with the draw shave or uh, on the rounded sides with a file. Hear that whistling, that means that I'm going against the grain and need to come at it from the other direction. The handles proved to be a bit more difficult to get nice and smooth. The poplar is a bit uh, wispy and isn't quite as easy to finish with a file as uh, oak is. But with uh, a bit of work it comes out. Now there's a pressure plate for the tensioning screw that needs to be recessed into the beam. And I'm just marking it out with an X-Acto knife so that I know where to chisel it out. The waste can be removed much like you would for any standard mortise. I just uh, cut it out from one end to the other and then true up the sides. It's not a very deep cut, but uh, it's a kind of fun one. drill out for the screws and install it. Now for the two stretchers, we need to have a mortise and tenon on either end of the stretchers. I like to cut the cheeks first and then the shoulders. These tenons are only 5 eighths of an inch deep. 
the pressure of the saw will actually hold them in place. These just keep them from sliding out. Now this mortise is a bit interesting in that it is not with the grain as most mortises are. It actually cuts across the grain. So I end up making a stop cut on either side and then quickly coming in with a small chisel to basically pare out the waste. It's a fun little maneuver and uh, very quick. These were only taking me about two or three minutes each, if that. Fitting them in and uh, testing them as we go, making sure everything's good. Now I wanted to do a lot of carving on this as there was a lot of good flat space for it and I decided on the far beam to actually freehand the carving trying to do a little bit of a cloud pattern to match the ball handles and I kind of enjoyed it something a little different on the grip side I decided to use the Celtic weave that I've been doing a lot with lately I did a video recently on how to actually do this it was very little time in order to do this entire beam with both of the weaves was about 45 minutes for me because it was uh, a lot of rinse and repeat you just conti continue the same movement from one end to the other. Then one of my favorite parts, I get to put my branding W on it. Because there was a nice spot on the ball end, I decided to put one on either end. I finish it off with boiled linseed oil and a paste wax finish. I do the boiled linseed oil before and after carving. I I think that adds a little bit to the, uh, the coloring part. Now we can tighten it up and take her for a test drive. I just like the way it looks, but the way it cuts is even better. So here I'm kind of playing with it and then I'm having fun. I'm seeing all the dust coming out and okay, throw all abandoned to the wind and fly. stopped caring about what I was doing and just cut. <laughs> it was too much fun. Seeing the dust come out the end is just uh, a joy. This is a, a beautiful saw and I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time with it. I've got a lot of resawing to do and uh, you'll be seeing it in a few videos coming up. Just love the way it looks in the wall. A great addition to the shop. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> this is a Rubo style frame saw, and it's the first one I've made for this shop, and it is a joy. It will look fantastic hanging up over here, and not only that, um, I'll use it quite a bit. I'm gonna be doing a lot of resawing for the dresser, and so that's one of the reasons why I really wanna do this uh, before I went further into the dresser. Uh, this goes along with the kerfing plane. Uh, both of these are from a kit from Blackburn Tools. And I have to say the instructions and the, the quality of the material um, have really blown me away. Uh, the, the kit is not only uh, affordable, it is a, a fantastic, fantastic kit. High quality, um, just everything I hope for and more. So um, definitely go check them out. I'll leave a link to uh, Blackburn Tools in the description below. And their kit for this saw is... Uh, Fantastic, goes together really well, instructions are fantastic, um, and I'm in love with it. The 32 inch saw, which is the one that I'm using, I find to be a, a perfect thrust for one person. Uh, I can make a, a solid pass all the way from one end to the other um, by myself, and it's light enough that I can still maneuver it around and uh, very useful. Um, I made mine out of poplar. Um, I was trying to go for lightweight so it's easier for me to move around. Uh, I think if I had to do it again, I'd probably choose cherry instead of poplar. Um, but the poplar works fine. It is very lightweight and uh, very durable. I, I haven't had any problem with it yet, so we'll see how it holds up over time. Um, I may end up making a new frame at some point, but for right now, I'm loving it. So 
One other change that I made is um, a lot of the traditional Rubeau saws have this curl at either end, um, and you can grab that and hold onto that um, very easily. It's, it's actually fairly comfortable. Um, but I wanted to do more of the, uh, the saw grip, which I think is kind of funny because I wanted to put a saw grip on the saw, and I didn't want to put a saw grip on the plane, uh, which a lot of people put the saw grip on the plane, but they don't put the saw grip on the saw. So I don't know exactly what's up with that, but I like it. Um, and I just modeled it all after a, uh, a, a handle that I already had, and it's very comfortable. It fits the way I wanted, and I just adjusted the size to uh, the, the grip I like. And it's a, it's a comfortable saw. I enjoy it. It's a, it's a lot of fun to use. I mean, a lot of fun. So I hope you like this. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Is there something that you uh, would have done differently? Is there something that you would like me to see uh, change up on it? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. If you like the video, please hit like and feel free to subscribe. Also, check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like. And until next time, have a wonderful day.